Okay, so let's talk The False Bride, which was episode three of season four of Outlander. So this episode had a lot of ups and downs. We actually mainly just focused on Jamie Clare and we saw the return of Brianna and Roger. And we mostly just focused on their storylines and we actually got to see a lot of uh, drama ensue. So let me start with the beginning of the episode. So we actually go back to, or go forward to, 1970. And we see Roger is selling his home. And he, Fiona and Fiona's husband, are talking. I suppose she's buying the house. I forgot that detail, but... Anyway, he's, uh, she's bringing up Brianna and... They're talking about it. Apparently Roger has been visiting her not too many times, but they have spent some time together since we last saw them. And their relationship's just kind of taking it a little slow. They talk on the phone, all that stuff. So at least we got that explained, which I think that was a great way to sum it all up. And it's actually kind of funny because in the books, at least in book two from what I'm reading, Fiona actually really annoys Roger. <laughs> I like that they kind of took a calmer approach to their relationship. They're just good friends that help each other out, so I like that part. And I'm glad we got to see Fiona again, too. So then we jump back to the 1700s, and we kind of see the aftermath of what happened in episode two. So, literally, it's just the next morning from that night, which I really thought it was, like, two days later at least, but a lot sooner than I thought. So, Jamie and Claire are leaving, and Jamie is talking to his auntie, Chacosta, and she doesn't want him to go, because she was hoping that he would be the new owner of her land, but clearly he doesn't want what comes with it, so... They are just going to find their own home. So before they depart, Jocasta gives Jamie an antique that his mother had. Like, a, I think they were silver candlesticks, yeah. And it's just a really nice moment because Jocasta really does care about Jamie. Like, you really get that sense of how motherly she is towards him. So I like that relationship. And unfortunately, to Claire, <laughs> yeah, no, not, not so motherly, but she tried. She just wasn't very happy with what, like, she doesn't like that Jamie is going off on his own and he wants to be a printer again. She doesn't want that kind of life for him, so she's kind of blaming Claire for it. And it's just kind of a... A little bit of a tension-filled scene because there obviously like there was some tension from the last episode and then on top of that there's you're leading my nephew into the wrong kind of life and just the very uh, tension-filled relationship there but anyway Claire gets her words in and they basically leave and also young Ian is still going with them because Originally, the plan was to have him go back to Scotland with his family, but he is, like, insistent on staying with Jamie, so he will be a part of the team. Um, so yeah, they head out, and John Quincy Myers, who we met in the last episode, he's going to help them, like, navigate the land. So they go on a little journey together, and they have... They talk a little bit about the Native Americans. We don't get to see... Well, actually, okay, I don't want to spoil it yet, but... We don't get to see, like, the Native American characters that we're going to meet this season. I think that's going to be in the next episode. But he knows a lot about the Natives and how, like, their culture is. So he's actually a good guide for the Frasers. So, um... Okay, so back to Roger and Brianna. So we get to see them meet at the airport, and they're driving down to North Carolina for a Scottish festival. 
and Roger was invited to play music for them. So they take this nice long road trip, which I can only imagine how long it is from Boston to North Carolina. That is a distance. Um, but nonetheless, they have a good time. And you see them, like, how their current relationship is. They're very close, and they're, like, there's a slight distance to them. But it's a, I can't explain it exactly, but they're cute together. <laughs> and Brianna's not afraid to say, like, stuff like, you're pretty, and she kisses him while he's driving. Which no one should ever do. <laughs> But it's just a nice little peek into, like, how their relationship is. And I also like this part where we see them driving on the road, and then we transition back to the 18th century. Same road, but obviously the land was different. It wasn't as tame. So I really liked that they're showing that Claire and Jamie have been where Brianna and Roger are. So that was really neat. Um... And back to Jamie and Claire, so eventually they go off on their own, and they're talking about Brianna, and like Claire mentions about the relationship that Brianna was having with, <laughs> let me say that differently, that, that, that Brianna had a nice relationship with Frank, like she really looked up to him, she wanted to do what he wanted to do, like she wanted to become a history, historian can't talk. <laughs> but she was explaining to this... Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. She was explaining this to Jamie because she was a little worried about Brianna because she was kind of having a little bit of an identity crisis because she just learned who her father really was and it's a lot to deal with. And we actually do learn that Brianna is at a new school, MIT, and she is studying engineering, so she has found a new path. So, nothing for Claire to worry about, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> but I liked the conversation, I just was like concerned the whole time because I fear every time Claire brings up Frank, Jamie is gonna get a little set off about it because he did get upset back in season three, knowing that Frank was the father of his child. So, thankfully he was understanding and he was nice about it. So, <laughs> and they're also talking about basically what Jocasta was telling Claire, like Claire saying, you don't have to choose this life for me, but Jamie definitely is set in his ways and he wants to take care of her, he wants to take care of Fergus and Marsley and young Ian, and he basically tells her, like, this is my life and I, I'm happy with it. So that was nice. Um, unfortunately, they get interrupted by Clarence the Mule, who apparently is a big star from this <laughs> book. Um, he runs off, I don't know why exactly, but for, uh, I guess for the plot. <laughs> so he runs off, Claire decides to go after him on her horse, which apparently a lot of people are complaining about that, but, well, I don't know. <laughs> I suppose both she and Jamie could have gone to fetch Clarence. I, I'm not gonna judge right now. Anyway, so yeah, she runs off to go do that, and so back to 1970, we see the Scottish Festival, and Roger is really embracing his heritage. He's in a kilt and everything, and even Brianna, she's wearing her plaid skirt, which I really liked the fashion in this episode for 1970. I thought it was really neat to see, like, especially the Scottish culture in the 1970s. So I liked the comparison. That was really neat. And we get to see them having fun at the festival. There's, like, this uh, portrait guy. He draws both him and Brianna. Both Roger and Brianna. <laughs> and I get the feeling that picture's going to become important later. Possibly to identify Roger if the book readers know what I'm talking about. Maybe. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so they also get to dance together, which is a really cute scene. And they're just having so much fun together. And I loved seeing that aspect of their relationship. Like getting to know each other and bonding. That was really nice. And we also get to see him perform. He sings a song, which I guess the song was called The False Bride. And I don't... I can't diagnose the lyrics because I don't remember the lyrics. However, there was a certain word in there that I heard that does become important later. But I will bring that up at the end. <laughs> so, back to Claire. She's trying to fetch Clarence. Unfortunately, as a, str yeah, as a storm is approaching, the uh, tree that's right in front of her gets hit by lightning. The horse freaks out, drops her on the ground, and she's unconscious. And we don't really know what happens because we kind of cut back and forth between her and Brianna. But eventually she does wake up, and it's pouring down rain. She tries to seek shelter, and... In the meantime, Jamie is trying to find her, which, as we all know, was probably impossible in a dark woods in the 18th century in a rainstorm. Not a good combination. So, yeah, he's having no luck finding her. She's managed to find a little, like, tree alcove area. And while she's there, she actually... Well, first important thing is she takes off her boots, and this was another thing that people were pointing out. That this, like, this, yeah. <laughs> the boots have zippers on them, which I assume she brought them from the 1960s. How else would they be there? <laughs> I don't know why this is a big debate. I mean, it's possible boots were made better in the 1960s and they can last through a trip through the jungle of an island and the rainstorm and almost drowning. I don't know. Those are some durable boots. <laughs> but anyway, so she takes those off. And she also finds a skull as well as a little, like, rock stone with the skull. She's noticing, like, these markings on the back of the skull. And these markings actually are a lot important than I thought the first time I watched the episode. So while she's hiding out in the alcove, all of a sudden she sees like this torch of fire, which, first of all, how is there a torch of fire in the rain? Second of all, she assumes it's Jamie, but then as the figure gets closer, she sees that it is a Native American coming at her, but when the lightning, you only see him when the lightning strikes, so the light shows him, but then it goes away, so does the man. And I kid you not, this scene legitimately creeped me out. <laughs> Just the effect of the ghost was very eerie to me. And I've actually never had that reaction to Outlander, so that was honestly kind of a cool moment to me. Just the way that they did the ghost. So he's fast approaching and suddenly he's like maybe about a few feet away from her. And she's wondering why he's there. And he doesn't say a word, but she notices the rock that she holds. It's a necklace that he's wearing. And then he turns around and he walks away. We notice that he's been scalped in the back, which, ow. And that explains the markings and the cracks in his skull. So, he's definitely a ghost, and that is his skull that she found. Which, that was actually really creepy to me. Because I haven't read the book, so I don't know how the scene plays out. But I thought it was, like, for the show, the scene was really well done. It was perfect amount of suspense and eeriness. And mystery, of course. Like, we have no idea who this guy is. So, yeah, that scene was really well done. And Claire sleeps the rest of the night out under her little alcove. When she wakes up, she notices that her boots are gone. So she takes the skull and the rock, and she notices that there are footprints in the ground. She follows them, and when she gets to the end, she finds Jamie. 
who's at like a little clearing area and apparently that's where her boots were. So Claire believes that the ghost led her back to Jamie, which that's a nice ghost. So yeah, they're not quite sure what to make of it, but they assume that it's a spirit that guided them back together. And while Claire is cleaning the skull, she sees something that she was not expecting to see. She sees that there are fillings in the teeth. So this is something that hadn't been done until the 1800s. And she's pointing out to Jamie that this person must be like a time traveler. Nah, they don't really cover it too much. Like, they don't speculate it speculate on it too much, but it's going to become important later. But the point is just to point out that, okay, this guy is not from this time. He's a ghost. A lot of things are kind of confusing here, but there will be answers in the future. In more ways than one. <laughs> so yeah, that was that part. And then I'm going to get back to the end, but I want to go back to Brianna and Roger. So, yeah, they have a good time at the festival, and by the way, I wanted to point out about the singing scene, uh, Richard Rankin, I think is his name, he is a good singer, I was not expecting that, like his voice, velvet, <laughs> so I thought that was a nice surprise to actually hear him sing, that was really, that was a nice treat, so yeah, back to the point of the story. <laughs> um, he and Brianna are about to part ways, go to their own cabins, and of course Brianna decides to invite him in, because she gives him a gift and she points out that she has some alcohol. So they go to have a drink in her cabin, and they, they have like a little talk. They're getting intimate, kind of. And then, obviously, it's clear that Brianna wants to have her way with him. And they start to, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately in this sense because it's going to lead to unfortunate things. <laughs> Roger stops the moment because he wants to give her a gift. And so he gives her a bracelet and it has like a little French saying inside. And, and this is where... <laughs> Roger proposes to Brianna. And I didn't think it was going to happen that soon. So as nice as the scene seems to be, it's really too soon. And Brianna's reaction is that she's not ready for marriage and that she can't accept his proposal. Unfortunately, this causes... Roger to get really bent out of shape about it. Like, I understand he loves her, and, like, they definitely have a good thing going, but I did agree with Brianna, because if I was in her shoes, this is how I would feel, too. That they hardly know each other. They haven't had a chance to really, truly get to know each other. So... That's basically the reason. She also just doesn't feel like she's ready for marriage because she's trying to still discover who she is and she wants to... Oh, sorry, this is my cat here. Hello. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, she just is not ready to become a wife, which is understandable. And also keep in mind of the time period this is in. This is like a time when the conventional marriage thing wasn't as much of a thing anymore, and women were trying to become a little more independent, which we're still kind of in that situation, but it's when it was starting. <laughs> but she's basically, from this time, this is how she was raised, and it's possible also that she's having trouble believing in marriage because... Claire and Frank ended up not having a great marriage, so it's kind of understandable that she doesn't view marriage as a great thing anymore at this point. But it, she also points out, like, it doesn't mean she never wants to get married, she just doesn't want it right now. 
However, Roger just doesn't want to hear it, and he's like, if I can't have all of you, I don't want you at all. Which, it's really harsh. Because, why not just take time? I don't get what the rush is with him, honestly. Now, I could understand he was a little bothered that she wanted to become intimate with him, but didn't want to marry him. We do need to keep in mind that he was raised by a reverend, so his views on that could be, like, this isn't how it's done. And he's also a little older than her, so he might be a little more old-fashioned. So there's just all these elements that we do have to look at and consider. But even so, just the way he responded to her, so, so disrespectful and just harsh. Like, would you really say that to somebody that you loved? Even if she didn't say that she loved him back, she was just really confused in the moment and she didn't want to give him like a false, like, answer. False. Keep that in mind. <laughs> but yeah, just, I thought it was just like this moment where it was like we were feeling Brianna also like, wow, this is a shocking way to react, Roger. So, unfortunately, like, she tries to make up with him later. He just doesn't want to hear it. And he goes to light the torch for the Mackenzies. And then when he turns back, she's gone. Which, I don't blame her, to be honest. The way he responded was just honestly very shameful. And I liked Roger so much. And I know he reacts this way in the book, too, I understand. But... <sighs> It's just, like, not how you would want somebody to respond if you said, I'm not ready for marriage. And I kind of ended up not liking his character though, because of how he reacted. Just, God, like, the way he looked at her, he was, like, angry. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Relationships are complicated, but definitely kind of a downer for me, in my opinion. Just, I'm sure other people, too. I know, people view it differently, so that's just my two cents there. Um, but anyway, to end the episode, we see Claire and Jamie continuing their journey, and they eventually stumble upon little strawberry plants on the ground, and I was trying to ignore the fact that they were eating strawberries without washing them first. <laughs> Sorry, 21st century values here. <laughs> but... She points them out, they eat some, and they notice the land around them, and then Jamie's looking over the hill, he sees the valley, there's a meadow where they can have animals, and where they can grow crops, and he's planning all of this out, and then Claire realizes that this is something that he wants, this is the land that they want as their home. So they look over the land, and... They realize that they have found their new home, and Jamie calls it Fraser's Ridge. <laughs> so we have officially been introduced to Fraser's Ridge. Not fully built yet, but we have now seen the land, and we are going to see the process of them getting the land, and how they're going to build their home there. But uh, just that ending scene was, uh, that was perfect. Because the last two episodes, like, the endings have been so depressing and dark. But this one was so hopeful, and you could feel the sense of happiness that they were both having. And just as they're looking over the hill, you hear the bluegrass music. And I thought that was just the perfect way to end an episode. So, I loved that. Yeah, overall, it was a great episode. And... Like, I was personally wondering what the title meant to the episode, like, before I saw it. And then I was trying to think what it meant after I saw it. So, like my friend pointed out, it was the song that Roger was singing. But also, I feel like there was also kind of some metaphor to it. Like, Brianna didn't want to be someone's wife. She didn't want to pretend to be somebody that she's not. And... If she was, then she would be a false bride. And she didn't want to be that way, and she didn't want to do that to Roger, whether 
he thinks of it that way or not. But also, in a way, it kind of worked for Claire as well, because she and Jocasta were kind of having that issue earlier on. And Jocasta, you know, you can kind of tell that she doesn't entirely like Claire for Jamie because she feels like she's ruining her life. But yeah, she just doesn't quite find her the right person for Jamie at that moment. So in a way, she's kind of a false bride in Jocasta's eyes. But anyway, this is just how I'm looking at it. It's not really like this is exactly what they were going for. But that's just how I'm viewing it to relate to the title. But yeah, that's what I thought of the episode. I loved it and I liked that it was calmer and we got to focus on the main characters more. So I'm really excited to see what we have in store for episode 4. And it looks like Jamie and Claire are going to have a run-in with the natives. We might learn more about the Native American ghost that she saw. I think his name is Ottertooth, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to learn more about him. And we're also, it looks like Roger is going to give Brianna that infamous phone call that there is something that he has found about her mother. Which, oh, I can only imagine the awkward tension between them right now. And I think there's also going to be a scene where Brianna visits the grave of Frank. And I don't know if this is supposed to be a flashback or in real time, like, she's upset about Roger. Like, think about it like this. This is the one person she could talk to about all of this. And now she doesn't even have, yeah, she doesn't even have that. So I can imagine her going to Frank's grave and being like, I'm lost right now. I'm very confused. So I think that scene's going to be very emotional, and it'll be interesting to see her, like, dealing with all of that. And I get the feeling, this is just a theory of mine, but I get the feeling the next episode is when Brianna travels back to the 1700s. I don't know for sure, but I feel like that would be a great closer to the episode, especially because I don't think there's too much more in between this time and when she travels back because she's supposed to learn about the events that happened to Jamie and Claire and then that's what prompts her to go back in time. So I think that would be a great way to close the episode. Like, you see Brianna walking to the stone and then we pan to behind the rock, we don't see her, and then we pan to the other side of the rock and she's gone. I feel like that would be really like a great ending to the episode. So we'll see if it happens. All right, I am going to end this episode, or rather this video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. I love doing these reviews. And I will see you for episode four of Outlander season four. Have a nice day. Bye.